Romans chapter 12, 1 through 5, and it reads, For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one and every one members of one another, having then gifts different according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy that was prophesied according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministry, ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching. Amen. God the Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. God, we come before you just want to thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done and that you are doing, Lord God. Lord God, we just want to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, Lord God, because you truly deserve it, Lord God. Lord God, we just ask you, Lord God, that you would just saturate this building with your presence, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we just hand over this worship service in your hand, Lord God. Let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we just ask that you come and dwell among us, that we may sing the way you want us to sing. We may preach the way you want us to preach. We may... Um, play the music as the way you want us to play it, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we just ask that you would just have your way, Lord God. I ask that you bless your people, Lord God. You know our needs, Lord God. I just ask you, Lord God, that you just have your way, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Good morning, Union. Here's what's happening this week at the U. Join us for Bible study this Tuesday at 6.30 p.m., streaming live on Facebook. Women's Book Club via Zoom, beginning on Friday, March 5th at 7 p.m. Book title, Learn to Look Beyond the Storm. Author, Belinda Bland. Dr. Ayanna Kersey McMullen will be with UBC again on Saturday, March 6th from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Topic, Understanding Dementia. Christian Education Ministry presents Vice Mayor Ciara Smith, Breaking the Glass Ceiling in Politics, March 24th, 7 p.m. on Zoom. Current LBC events. LBC Interactive Book Club, which is every Thursday at 7.30 p.m. via Zoom. Fellowship Night, which is every first and third Friday each month via Zoom. And today, and in the month of February, at 6 p.m. will be the LBC Black History Debate Discussion. For Zoom credentials and details of all upcoming events, please see today's bulletin and flyers via our church website and mobile app. Please be sure to contact the church office for purchase of Pastor CD, which is $15, UBC Mass, $10, and Prayer Journals, $15. Lastly, we would like to congratulate Pastor Yvette Haley and Deacon Thelma Brooks for successfully completing and graduating from the Full Gospel International Teachers Academy this past Thursday. This concludes this week's announcements. Here at Union, this is our year of recalibration celebrating 75 years of ministry. We pray you stay safe and stay blessed. First and foremost, I want to thank God for Union. 75 years, what an awesome time, um, amazing time. And just to be a part of those 75 years, I'm definitely blessed. Um, and uh, my children are products of Union. Uh, what an awesome blessing they are. Uh, I wanted to just share, I guess, what attracted me to Union, that it's a teaching church. Um, I learned many things there, uh, many lessons, uh, and just amazing. 11 years that I spent with Union uh, before I left. Um, I wanted to just say, I guess, what attracted me to Union. Another thing was just the arts. I love music. I came on a Resurrection Sunday and the daughters of day we were dancing and the choir was singing uh, and that was it for me. Uh, after that, I joined the church, uh, but I wanted to leave you guys with something uh, since I can't be there all the way from North Carolina. When you're lonely, heart filled with despair, remember God cares. Mm -hmm. And when you're in doubt and you can't find your way out, he will see you through. Just call on the name of Jesus. Just call his name. Oh, how precious. Oh.
whether you're in your living room, whether you're in your kitchen, whether you're in your dining room, whatever you're doing, this is the place of worship. And we give God thanks for the household of faith just to continue, just to lift up the name of Jesus during this time. We want to give our special um, recognition to our senior pastor who is not here, along with the leading lady, with, which is now the newly ordained assistant pastor of Union Baptist Church, Pastor Yvette Haley. And we also want to give a special welcome to our pastor, our newly ordained pastor of preaching, Pastor Shanice Palmer. And we give thanks for her, we give thanks for all of them that were ordained last week. And as we move in service, we want to move knowing that we're still serving a risen Savior. You heard the announcement. To get caught up, go to our, our website at ubcallington.org or download our church app at UBC Allentown so you can be caught up with, with all the announcements. At this time, we're going to go into um, our, our giving. And there are five ways to give here at Union Baptist Church. You can visit our church building here with, with your offering at Union Baptist Church, 302 North 6th Street, Anton, Pennsylvania. Or you can, speak, you, can, you can mail it, same address as 302 North 6th Street. You also can go to our app and you can give up right there on our website. Also, if you are on, on Cash App, if you are on Cash App, it is, it is dollar sign UBC Allentown. Dollar sign UBC Allentown and you may give your offering. Amen. At this time, we're going to do our litany. Uh, we give because God has provided us his greatest gift in Christ Jesus. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We first gave ourselves to God as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service. We give our time, talent, and treasures to support the ministry of this local assembly called Union Baptist Church. We give our substance freely of our own will, without compulsion, but through our faith in the grace and generosity of our great God. We bring our gifts each time we enter the house of worship because giving is an expression of worship to our loving God. We give knowing that we are blessed to be a blessing to others. We give our best believing that God will be pleased with our hearts, with our gifts. We give cheerfully and generously with anticipation and expectation that God will respond to our worship, which is overwhelming grace. We thank God for this wonderful privilege to partner with the divine kingdom building.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of our anthems, amen. Hallelujah.
praise the Lord. Lift every voice. Lift every voice. Amen. If it isn't God, it's a good God. And today I'm standing behind this uh, pulpit to give you a word this, this morning. A word that will hope to challenge you. A word that will hope to guide you. I hope that a word that you will exercise. And again, giving thanks for Pastor Haley um, uh, uh, in, his, in his absence for this uh, opportunity to uh, share with you, along with his wife of this church, the leading lady, the, the assistant pastor, Pastor Yvette uh, Haley. And if you with me, turn to the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 16, the second book of Chronicles chapter 16 and I'll be reading only two verses verses 9 and verses 10 for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him hear him Thou wast done foolishly, therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. And verse 10, And Asa was wroth with the seer, and put him in prison house, for he was in range with him because of this thing. And Asa oppressed some of the people the same time. And I'm going to read verse 10 one more time for your hearing. Then Asa was wroth with the seer and put him in a prison house, for he was in a rage with him because of this thing. And Asa oppressed some of the people the same time. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. And Father God, I just give you thanks for this moment right now. Give you thanks for this opportunity. I'm glad for this day that you have made that we can rejoice and be glad in any way ever we are. Because to worship you, God, is a lifestyle. To worship you is just a daily living. And even now, God, we place this work before you. We place the souls before you. We place the years before you. I pray, God, that you will come on that. You will dwell in me, Father God, and direct you to speak the word that you will have me to say in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As we enter 2021, a year of unexpected, our pastor uh, has, has cast a vision, a goal for 2021, the year of recalibration. And that is such a good word, a long word, a strong word. So tonight, for the next few minutes, I want to share with you on a recalibration of relationship when a subtitle is we collaborate your heart. All right. We live in that time and place you nowhere. Know, we want to serve God. We're destined to serve God, but but our heart is far away from God. So if you will nudge to your neighbor or if you're in the social media land, ask yourself, how's your heart in relationship? How's your heart in relationship? We have a loving Father who longs to have a good relationship with us. In this verse, we see that God is longing to have a strong relationship with those heart that is committed and loyal to Him. Sadly, I speak to so many people who do not have a good relationship with their earthly Father. And so this concept of a Father who wants a good relationship with them does not relate to their experiences. It seems to me that we are living in a world that sadly lack in godly relationships. The concept that we are to love God and love our neighbor as ourselves is certainly not the way of the world. The way of the world is I am number one and I want to look out for me. Everyone else can look out for themselves. As for God and his ways, when it is convenient, I will fit him into my daily schedule. After all, God help those who help themselves. Well, that's a false statement. Because God help those who can't help themselves, but repent and cry out to him for help. Psalm 34. 
4, 17 said, The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears, and delivers them out of all their troubles. We come into a right relationship with God when we live in and trust in Jesus and his finished work on the cross. Our own works are but filthy rights to the Lord. You see, if we go back one verse, we see that in Psalm 34, 16, the face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Oh, God longs for that right relationship with us, but we must prepare to be fully committed to him. God should be worshipped and only him alone. Yes. There should be no other God. We should not have to play any mini mind more, but he is the only God. The same goes for our earthly relationship. It requires commitment and loyalty for them to work. How do you shape up? Are you fully committed to a right relationship with God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? And are you fully committed to a right relationship with those around you, your neighbors? You see, you see, the same goes for the early relationship. You have to shape up in order to serve God. You see, anything else is rebellion, and that leads to my next point out of our passage of Scripture. Because the second point is, do you have a heart of rebellion? Oh my God. If we're going to serve God, we have to study the word. And not only study the word, but we have to be obedient to the word. And not only be obedient to the word, but we have to submit our will and our way to the one and only God. You see, Asa had a heart of rebellion. He did not want to listen to the word of God through Anai, the seer prophet. Because right here in 2 Chronicles 16, 9 and 10, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro through the, through the whole earth, to show himself strong on behalf of those heart is loyal to him. In this you have done foolishly. Therefore, from now on, you shall have words. And verse 10 says, then Asa was weary with the seer and put him in prison, for he was enraged at him because of this. And Asa oppressed some of the people at that time. Asa had defeated the Ethiopians in open battle, but his confidence in God had slipped. And now he sought only a human solution to his problems. When you're confronted by the prophet Anani, Asia threw him in prison, revealing the true condition of his heart. It is not sin to use human means to solve our problems, but it is sin to trust them for God, to think they are better than God, to think they are better than God's ways, or to leave God completely out of the problem-solving process. Instead of seeking God, Asa had sought the help of pagan nations to help him. Who do you turn to help? I like the book of Psalm 121 because it leaves little doubt as to where our help should come from. So Psalm 121 verse 1 and 8 says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He, will, he who keep you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is the shade at your right hand. The sun shall not smite thee, nor the day by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in this time for even forevermore. So can you confidently say that my help comes from the Lord who made this heaven and earth? Anything else is rebellion and God hates rebellious people. In fact, we see with King Saul, God speaks to Samuel causing the spirit of witchcraft. My, 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 my. 1 Samuel 15 verse 23. For rebellion is the sin of witchcraft, 
and the stubbornness is in iniquity and idolatry because you have rejected the word of the Lord. He also has rejected you from being the king. So God is looking for our total trust and obedience. He is looking for people with the right attitude. A heart that sees the reality of God and he wants to ensure that you love him as he loves you. My next point is going to go down is, do you have a heart that sees the reality? God has much in store for those hearts right here, even right here in our building, if you're watching via our social media. 1 Corinthians 2, 9, eyes have not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Not only that he longs to give you the victory over everything that comes against us in this life, we will look at verse 8 of our past passage in 2 Corinthians 16. Because verse 8 says, Where the Ethiopian and the Lubin had a huge army with every chariot and horseman, yet because you rely on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. Huge problem seemingly to when you have a huge problem, your ultimate goal is to trust God. Your ultimate goal is to see God. Your ultimate goal is to stay at the presence of the Lord day in, day out, in prayer, in supplication, to be committed, to be loyal. Because you need to trust that God, knowing that whatever situation that you find yourself into, He will take you out. Because most of the time, you will see it's not the size of the enemy that comes against us that is the problem. It's who or what we are putting our trust in. Psalm, Psalm, the, the book of Proverbs tells us that to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all thy way, you should only acknowledge him and you shall and he shall direct your path. I found in my life, in my walk with God, if, if my walk in God is not carefully maintained, there is that subtle, that drifting of aloneness. It doesn't take and it doesn't take long for Christianity to become hardness. It doesn't take us to, to have this hatred and then we we'll start to walk in that um even in that hypocritical journey because we say we love God but when troubles come we don't know what to do. We want to put our trust in man. Our walk with God is above and beyond everything else inside and out of reality. God begins to work in our lives at the level of our hearts. God is not impressed with our externals. It is possible to be religious and devout on the inside and to be anal and empty spiritually inside. But I'm also struck by the promise given to us as a New Testament believers. Ezekiel and Jeremiah prophesied the day when a new covenant should be instituted. God would dwell within them and write his law on our hearts. We would interact with him from the inside out. Ezekiel 36, 26 and 27, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and will give you my judgment and to do them. When Jesus met the disciples in the upper room, he lifted the cup and said these, these significant words. This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you. You and I have been grafted into the new covenant promise of God so that you and I have an edge over the Old Testament believers on a heart relationship with God. It is not, it, it, it does not matter who or what comes against us, if our heart is right with God, He is our deliverer, He is our way maker. Then we need to ask the this question, how is the heart? Ask the neighbor, how is the heart? Throughout all of the scripture, God speaks so much about our hearts and, and our condition. Because in the text in 2 Corinthians 69, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth 
to show himself strong on behalf of those heart is loyal to him. Personally, I long for that strength in work of God in my heart. God knows my frame is dust. I need it. The text says that God is looking for people he can strengthen, but there is a qualifier. God looking for a particular kind of heart. God is searching this earth for hearts that are fully committed to him. It's critical to understand what the heart is according to scripture. The heart is the place of conscience, decision making, the place of spiritual activity. Our hearts are our personality as a whole. It is where we desire it, it's our passion, it's our thoughts, it's our understanding, our will. It is where God meets us. What is a heart? It is really what you are and God is searching the condition of our hearts. We live in a world that bent on credentials. Everyone is interested in who you are and what you are like your business cause, your, um, your, your acclaim, your honors, we are received. I like to think that when God begins to prove my life that I can stop him on the outside and talk about my credentials, that would be much more comfortable. And I would say, Lord, wait up, wait a minute. I graduated from Bible college. I am a pastor. But you know what God will say? God pushes that all aside and say, I am not impressed. I want your heart. Successful business people, presidents of companies, come to God and say, wait a minute, Lord. Here's my business card. What do you think? Lord, look at the tag on my corporate door. And God says, I'm not impressed. God is on the search for a few good hearts. I want to be like David, who would be so transparent that he could put aside all his credentials and say in Psalm 139, 23 and 24, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. And see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me to everlasting. This afternoon, this morning, I'd like to do a spiritual electro cordial grab on all of us. I'm asking what God, what does God look for when you get past all your, ex your external things? It is my prayer that we see God fully. It's my prayer that in spite of what troubles come, that my heart is a heart that desire after God. My heart will desire after his passion. My heart will desire after his way. Because we serve a God that cares for us. We can search throughout all eternity and there is still no like you. We serve a God that say, cause all my cares unto you because I care it for you. We serve a God that says, search me, O Lord. Whatever you are, whatever sins you have encountered, when my God speaks to you, when my God ministers you, those sins are dead. Those sins are no longer in our heart. But when Jesus sits in our heart, we are a new creature. All things are passed away. All things are become new. And if we just stop and take a moment to realize how awesome God is, how good God is, how wonderful He is, in spite of all the faults, in spite of all the shame, in spite of all the labor, that we serve a God that said, I will love you in spite of, because I sent my son Jesus Christ to die for you. So in spite of what we are going through, that Jesus paid it all. I no longer need to walk in shame. I no longer need to walk in this way. Because I have the Lord with me day in and day out. There's no longer I need to come into the temple to worship God. But I can worship God wherever I am. I can lift up the name of Jesus wherever I am. For serving Jesus, you need that heart transfer. You need Jesus to reside in inside. You need Jesus to take room. And when Jesus reside in your heart, then you will know how to address people. You will know how to speak people.
people, you will not want to speak of the Lord because God is the only God and there is none like you. And the question is, how is the heart when all those potential pass? Who are you when that jacket is off? Who are you when that wig is off? Who are you when that makeup is off? Who are you when that heart is off? Who are you and all of us like say, give me your heart and I will do the rest. Give me your heart, I will do the rest. Give me your heart, I will do the rest. Give me your heart, I will do the rest. Give me your heart, I will do the rest. All what you have to do is to surrender. All what you have to do is to surrender. All what you have to do is surrender. Because Jesus is in the operation business. Jesus is in the fixing business. Jesus is the way maker. Relationship with 
Jesus. 